Hello and welcome to Neno Lapsara program and may God continue to help you as you continue to ponder the word of God you are hearing from this ministry. The Bible speaks about Mary and it says Mary pondered all what she had from the angels what she had from God, she poured it in her heart and kept it in her heart. We have spoken about obedience. But today I want us to speak about a church with a listening heart. This is what shall make all the difference worldwide. And since time memorial, what brings the difference is not the message or the messenger. It is the listening heart of an individual. Proverbs chapter number 20 and verse number 27 says, The spirit of man is a lamp of the Lord, searching all his innermost parts. And the Amplified Bible says, The spirit, the conscience of man, is a lamp of the Lord searching and examining all the innermost parts of his being. God created man in his own image with the spirit, the soul, and body. And the human spirit is that distinctive element that separates humanity from all other creatures of the world. And after the fall of Adam, human spirit, which God had put in Adam, died because of trespasses and sin. But once the life and the light of Christ has flooded in our hearts by the grace through faith in him, our spirit comes back to life. When Adam sinned before God, so that light of the Lord came out of his life. By the moment we are born up, we are born again. We acquire the same. So we become his hand to help. We become his feet to go, his heart to love and his light to shine forth his life in the human, in the human flames. The psalmist said in the book of Psalms, chapter number 119 and verse 105, The word of the Lord is my lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So this is what flames the life of a human being with fire because man is not an animal and is not like any other creature. God Jehovah, creator of heaven and earth, put something in man that makes him different from any other animal because God gave him a conscience and this conscience is the law master. This is what tells us the wrong and the right. He's a teacher and a judge for each man or a woman or any child. In the book of Galatians, chapter number 3 and verse number 24, the Bible says, Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And this is what most of us do not have. And this is what is not right in our lives. Your conscience is the candle of the Lord, the light from God, inside you, which examines and judges your thoughts. 
words and deeds. And according to the book of Hebrews, the Bible says, piercing even to the dividing ascender of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows and is a designer of the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. So man makes choices by more than instinct. For God gave every conscience, conscious person a conscience to help him know and do what is right. Here the word conscience has two parts. Con means with plus conscience, knowledge, equals to knowing within yourself about yourself. So, so God has put these faculties in our hearts that we can be able to make the right choices of life. So this invisible spirit inside you has a sense of right and wrong. And it, is, it will approve right things and condemn wrong things. Adam had a choice to make. God did not leave him without a spirit. He had a choice to make about eating from the tree of life and eating on the tree of death. So he had to make choices. God will never make choices for you. God will always give you an idea. But it's you to take a step of faith to make the right choice. Therefore, consider how, how, however, you can have a thought within your self and yet analysis, judge, and thought as well. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 20, verse number 11 says, For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except God's spirit in him. A man can only know himself by his conscience. He cannot know another person by it. Proverb chapter number 14 and verse number 10 says, Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can share its joy. So it is only the spirit in you which understands the things within you. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 17, that the heart of man is deceitful. And who can know it? And then it says, it's only God who examines and makes judgments to the thought of man. So may God help us to understand how to interrelate with the God, with the Spirit of God, so that we can be able to manage ourselves. Sometimes your spirit is full of joy, and sometimes it is full of sadness. And other times, no other person can fully feel or know your emotions. So nobody can know my thoughts apart from the Spirit of God within me. So the human spirit is God's lamp in a dark world of sin and suffering. We are not created with capacity to shine ourselves. Only Christ, the light of Christ, the light of God, within us can regenerate the human spirit to shine on our behalf. So Christ is a true light. Your conscience can convict you that what you or others have thought is wrong. This internal sense of guilt can be very strong and it can control or influence what you do or not. The Bible talks about the story of this adulterous woman in the book of John chapter number 8. 
And the Bible says they accuse us of the woman took her to Jesus. But Jesus understood the concerns of her accusers. And when he confronted them with his righteousness, they all ran away and left the woman alone with Jesus. So may God help us. Before we judge others, can we judge ourselves to the right concerns? And when God confront us and confront our spirit with the word of righteousness, may we break far the ground according to Isaiah 10, 1, 11, which says, break up your furrow ground for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and rain righteousness on us. God is looking on that broken and contrite spirit. And like David, we are people of so many weaknesses all around us. But it's only God who can convict when we break our furrow ground, the ground of our hearts, and seek him until righteousness fall on each one of us. So if the current judgment of God was to be averted, the people of God had to render their hearts and not their garments. So God is calling us to render our hearts and no longer our garments. As we sow seeds of righteousness that we can reap according to the masses and the loving kindness of our God. So our heart is like that rough ground which Hosea is talking about. Hosea was a farmer, so he understood much about the ground, that you have to break it so that he can bring forth and become fruitful. So can we break the furrow ground of our hearts so that we can, God can sow seeds of righteousness which can reap to his masses and loving kindness in these last days without leaving our own ways, but we honor God. So the Bible says, the heart of man is deceitful, according to the book of Jeremiah. Who can know it apart from God? So may God help each one of us to change our thoughts, examine our hearts, because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to separate bone and marrow. Because this is the blessed man who trusts in God and whose confidence is in the Lord, his God. He is like that person who is planted by the waters, who spread out its root by the levers and will not fear when heat come, but its leaves will be green and will not be concerned in years of drought. It will not cease from yielding its fruit. So God is in search of a heart, according to Jeremiah 17.10, because he's just searching our mind and trying our hearts and to give every man according to his way according to the fruits of his doing in the name of the Lord. Can we commit our hearts before the Lord? Can we be like David who understood his weaknesses 
and he addressed his heart, which was downcasted to focus on the mightiness of God in the name of the Lord. May the greater, greatness of God continue to work upon your life even as you make the right, the, right child, the right search of your heart in the name of Jesus. You are blessed even as we pray for our hearts. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this day for your greatness. Thank you for that heart with a listening instinct to hear and ponder upon the word of the Lord. Lord, I thank you because you have promised you shall give us a heart which is soft than that hard heart spoken by Isaiah, everlasting God. May your sufficient grace spread to each one of us. May your life in kindness be upon us in the name of Jesus. May the blessings of the Lord flow from our hearts. May our hearts become the spring of life to many in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. May God bless you even as you continue to view Neno Lapsara, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.